Throughout time, there have been mysteries mankind cannot explain. But advances in technology have led to new theories, and the search is underway for evidence that may unlock the most baffling questions of our time. On Mystery Quest. The night sky is calm and clear. Across miles of desert, nothing moves, except one car with two men on a mission. I can prove it. I know the place. One, a physicist, is promising something shocking is about to appear. It'll show up just over that ridge. Then, right on cue, an object appears from nowhere. Oh my god, what is that? The bizarre craft disappears and a secret is revealed. I told you, we're not alone. <laughs> Questions about the existence of alien life have persisted for decades. Even more speculation surrounds the U.S. government and what it really knows. But amid the theories, there is one certainty. A belief that the public isn't being told everything. The conspiracy theories surrounding Area 51 are numerous. People use this as a blank slate on which to draw their darkest fears. While records are by no means complete, there have been thousands of reported UFO and alien encounters. From a mysterious crash in 1897, six years before the Wright brothers' first flight, to the Battle of Los Angeles in 1942, when UFO reports triggered massive anti-aircraft fire over the city. and the most famous UFO crash in U.S. history, Roswell, New Mexico. If I was in charge of the military and the government, I would do exactly what potentially has been done, and that's keep it a secret. For decades, there has been one location believed to be the epicenter of this government cover-up, Area 51. The military base is located in the midst of the Nevada desert, 85 miles north of Las Vegas. The name refers to a grid number found on an old map of the much larger site called the Nevada Test and Training Range. Built in 1955, reports of strange and unusual activity emerged almost immediately. Yet there is no official documentation the location even exists. Up until uh, recently, it's been denied that it even existed, even though people knew about it. So that, to me, that's a mystery. Over the years, a portrait has emerged of this mysterious place. Many believe its primary purpose is a testing ground for the government's clandestine spy plane program. Today, Area 51 is very active. They've built new runways, new hangars. I mean, there's, there's some two dozen hangars there, so that's evidence that there's a lot of programs going on. Area 51 was created as a testing base for secret aircraft and secret weapon systems. 
That's all we know for sure, and that's all that the solid evidence is telling us. But others believe these secret weapon systems are simply a smokescreen to cover the real story. In 1989, details began to emerge of a program that went far beyond spy planes. There's a huge underground base out there, and that's where they work with the aliens. As hard as it is to believe, it's true. I mean, there are aliens all over the place. If you and I walked in on everything that was being done, I'm sure we, we would be flabbergasted. We probably could not conceive all the different types of testing or even try to comprehend some of the technology. Now, Mystery Quest is mounting an investigation to try to find evidence of any government cover-up. The expedition team will look for physical evidence of UFOs in the desert surrounding Area 51. To do this, they'll search the sites of reported crashes. Pete, I think we found something here. You may want to come take a look at this. The science team will test recovered metal fragments and determine if they are from Earth or another world. What do we got? Mystery Quest will also talk to a former U.S. Air Force pilot who says the government is actively seeking to cover up knowledge of alien encounters. It's registered top secret. You can't tell your wife, you can't tell your commander, you can't tell anybody in the squadron. The team will also position cameras around the perimeter of the base and look for any anomalies that may appear in the desert sky and use a powerful telephoto lens to glimpse further into Area 51 than ever before. Right, here it is. And our investigator will examine a new location to determine if the government has moved its alien operations. Area 51 operated in secret for decades. A lot of people think that there's UFO activity at Area 51, with good reason. I mean, because of such a secretive nature, and the cat was let out of the bag by Bob Lazar. In 1989, Physicist Bob Lazar claimed that the government was testing alien spacecraft at Area 51. Bob comes by the house at night and we're sitting over there and says, I saw a disc today. And I said, theirs or ours? And he said, theirs. John Lear, a retired airline pilot, is a close friend of Bob Lazar. Lear says Lazar told him he worked at Area 51 analyzing the propulsion systems of alien spacecraft. These spaceships could travel millions of miles an hour using a strange atomic substance called Element 115, a material which allows the craft to move through space by bending and drawing it around the ship. The space is a fabric. Uh, we think of it as a nothing, as just something cold or only containing one hydrogen atom per square meter, but it's actually a fabric. You can actually pull it. So you can go, if you could go a million miles every 12 milliseconds, you can figure out that's pretty darn fast. To prove his claims, in March of 1989, Bob Lazar led John Lear to a location outside the base. Then he told him exactly where and when he'd see an alien spacecraft for himself. It was descending. It had come up and everybody says, there it is, there it is. But I could see the yellow and the, and the goldish. It was radiating and it was descending. And I could see it getting close to the mountain. It was a classic saucer shape. If you put one plate on top of the other, that would be a flying saucer. That was what I saw. A secret test site. And just a few minutes ago, we saw one of the government uh, uh, extraterrestrial UFOs 
fly over there. Uh, we all watched it for about uh, <clears throat> seven or eight minutes. Lear was stunned by what he saw and is convinced to this day it was not of this world. It was exactly the day, exactly the night, exactly the time that it came up. So he had to have worked there. He had to have, you know, been involved in the program to, to get information like that. The expedition team is near Area 51 in an attempt to determine if what Lear and Lazar saw was real. Peter Merlin is an aerospace historian and expert on the U.S. government's experimental aircraft programs. Mark Easter is the international public relations director of MUFON, the mutual UFO network. MUFON is the world's largest civilian UFO research organization. Their first task is to set up camera traps that will continuously scan the skies for 48 hours, looking for any signs of activity. We're on the Highway 375. We're headed towards Groom Lake Road, which is here. And we're going to get up on this side up in the desert and uh, put the surveillance cameras up in this area here. There's less chance of somebody, you know, happening across it. Leave them for 48 hours and see what happens. So. Mystery Quest has obtained three specialized cameras to digitally record the skies above Area 51 for 48 hours. The cameras are weatherproof, designed for areas where light levels change drastically. Infrared technology will allow them to capture images during the night. But penetrating a possible government cover-up is no small task. And almost immediately, the team's investigation meets resistance. Does it look like he might come this way, or is he going to stay put? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Mystery Quest has traveled to the Nevada desert, hoping to unlock any cover-up about what our government really knows about alien life and UFOs. <laughs> UFO sightings have been reported around the world for centuries. There may be evidence that ancient cultures were visited by aliens. In Peru, giant figures of animals visible only from the air are etched into a high desert plateau spanning more than 50 miles. They are called the Nazca Lines, after the people who made them 3,000 years ago. Some believe they were ancient alien runways. The Nazca Lines are aerial guidelines to find, um, to find a path to the Nazca Plain. These markings which range from hundreds to several thousand feet long, show direction and regions where they could land and conduct specific operations. The period after World War II seems to have ushered in a new wave of UFO sightings. The most famous alien incident in history occurred in 1947 in Roswell, New Mexico. Reports emerged that the military had recovered a crashed flying disc from a ranch near Roswell, and suspicions of an intricate cover-up have been rumored for decades. Parts were recovered, bodies were recovered, so the word went out before the military industrial complex could get its hands on it and choke it. It is now known that governments around the world have also been keeping meticulous files on UFOs for decades. The United States has yet to fully release its files. But in 2008, 
the British government opened its files to the public. The reports were astounding. Thousands of unexplained UFO sightings. One of the most incredible incidents happened to an American Air Force pilot, Milton Torres. In 1957, Torres was stationed at a Royal Air Force base in Leeds, England. Only in the past year has he been authorized to recount what really happened to him. They scrambled me. It was the most incredible thing. This would be a hot fire mission. This meant he had orders to shoot down whatever was up there. And I would be cleared to fire and I would select 24 rockets. Torres climbed to 30,000 feet. The clouds were thick, slightly obscuring his view. But the image on his radar screen was clear. The UFO was less than a mile away. It registered as the size of a football field. Yet it was zigzagging through the sky at an incredible speed. I saw it going up at about Mach 10, 10,000 miles an hour. We didn't have the SR-71, we didn't have the F-22, we didn't have anything that could go anywhere near that speed. Then, suddenly, the radar image disappeared almost as quickly as it had appeared. But Torres would quickly learn. The government didn't want him talking. The next day, the spook came from the uh, embassy in London. So he said, now you can't tell your wife, you can't tell your commander, you can't tell anybody in the squadron, including your wingman. It was registered top secret. If you say there's anything to anybody, we'll take you a flying status. Well, I just got, I work hard to become a fighter pilot. I wasn't about to lose that, so I've been shut my mouth. Some argue that what Milton Torres observed was only a radar anomaly. But more than 50 years later, the career pilot is convinced about what he saw. Anybody who tell me some bull story uh, and the Air Force with the weather balloon crap, that, uh, weather balloons don't go Mach 1. This thing was going all kinds of speeds. So whatever it was, it was not made of this earth. Speculation about an ongoing alien cover-up has raged for decades. Rumors are fueled by a government that won't officially admit the existence of Area 51. What is known is that Area 51 was originally constructed in 1955 as an aircraft testing site. Today, Satellite images confirm what appears to be a military facility. Two dozen buildings along with a 5,000-foot runway. Even the airspace around Area 51 is restricted. Even aerial surveillance is, is effectively impossible. Planes aren't allowed to fly over. There are reports that uh, astronauts have gotten into trouble for accidentally managing to turn cameras uh, down onto that area. And people living in the small town of Rachel, Nevada, just outside the base, have long reported strange happenings. A local inn owner believes she actually saw something extraterrestrial. It was between 8.30 and 9.30 at night. The beam of light came through the back door and it shot about six feet into the room. It illuminated the entire door jam. In Area 51, do I know what's going on for sure? No. Do I believe there's all kinds of testing going on, not just aircraft? Yes. After setting the camera traps, the expedition team approaches the perimeter of Area 51 in an attempt to survey the base. 
There is no official main gate that leads into Area 51, but any approach makes it clear that you are not wanted. Signs warn against trespassers, while orange posts mark a nearly invisible boundary. And the team is already under observation. They've uh, even got remote cameras up there, so that guy doesn't even really need to be there watching us. He's just there in case we cross the border. I don't know what sort of telephoto they've got. They can probably read our license plate from there. The guards are part of a private security force that monitors the perimeter of Area 51. They're authorized to arrest anyone who crosses. The investigators decide to test Area 51 security at another gate. Does it look like he might come this way, or is he going to stay put? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. He's just standing there looking at me right now, or looking at us. Merlin and Easter realize their investigation into Area 51 is going to require a new strategy. The next attempt could lead to a new discovery or their arrest. I honestly don't have a good feeling about this. Mystery Quest is searching for clues into the truth behind the U.S. military's most secretive base. Many believe the government is involved in a cover-up of recovered alien technology and life forms. But what has been confirmed is that strange things happen near this desert testing ground. Without warning, and without explanation. A young family sits down together for dinner. Suddenly, the walls begin to shake. But geologists confirm it's not an earthquake, and weather services report no unusual activity. This mysterious wave is called a skyquake, but its origins are completely unknown. One theory is that these quakes are caused by a plane developed at Area 51 that flies so fast it is not called supersonic, but rather hypersonic. The government has never admitted it exists, but its code name is reported to be Aurora. The Aurora is one of the airplanes that has probably brought more people to study Area 51 than anything else. It was rumored to be something that could fly faster than Mach 5. Mach 5 is almost 4,000 miles per hour, twice as fast as any known airplane ever built. The rumors about Aurora were fueled by mysterious condensation trails that appear to be unlike any ever seen. Photographs show bizarre contrails, which consist of circular shapes evenly scattered throughout a line. People who believe in the Aurora project point to uh, these sightings of, of these kind of mysterious contrails in the, in the sky. Um, they're sometimes described as being like donuts on a rope or, or pearls on a string. Uh, the idea is that the highly innovative propulsion system of the Aurora aircraft would produce this kind of characteristic uh, contrail. 
The incredible abilities of the Aurora have led to speculation that alien technology must be behind such a powerful airplane. But conclusive proof of the program has yet to publicly surface. So far, uh, in all the years since there were rumors about Aurora, there has never been any hard evidence that such a plane actually exists. Area 51 may not be the only secretive government test facility with an extraterrestrial connection. Many believe there could be an alien research network of locations around the U.S. and the world. This thing has grown uh, worldwide, and you have to have support, logistics, uh, and uh, landing sites for craft. Any place where the space shuttle can land in an emergency, you can bet that that's part of the, the Area 51 system. There are reports this network includes the Atlantic Undersea Test and Evaluation Center, or AUTEC, the Navy's ground zero for evaluating advanced technology. The base is located off the Florida Peninsula on Andros Island in the Bahamas. They have a, a natural laboratory for the testing of uh, submarine technology. And if you think of a, a submarine, you really will get a good idea of what a UFO is. Because a UFO is basically a submarine that can come out of the ocean, go into the air, and go into space. One location rumored to be in this network of new secret bases is 800 miles away from Area 51 in Green River, Utah. In the late 1990s, there were claims Area 51 had become threatened by scores of tourists and alien seekers, and the government responded by moving their operations. Glenn Campbell has been investigating the military bases of the Nevada desert for 15 years. He is examining the rumors that may link the Utah facility to the UFO research network. This looks like it. We are coming up on what looks like a gate. This is the main launch complex. This is the heart of this supposedly secret facility. I'm gonna get out and check it out. The facility was once part of a huge missile test range called White Sands. Man, we got here just as a, a monster, a monster storm is blowing in from the west. This is what I think is the, the central launch complex. It seems to be in the center of the pads. I don't know what's in here exactly. You got this big old steel door. Glenn's search reveals what appears to be an abandoned military facility. Debris and wires cover the ground. More importantly, there is no evidence of alien or any other research activity. Now, there can always be one of those buildings where there's something secret, but the point is there's no infrastructure, there's no activity, there's no trucks coming and going, there's no people. This is a dead facility. This is not the new Area 51. There is a belief that physical evidence may be lying in the desert. Now, the expedition team is on the hunt for that evidence. This came up on, right? yeah. Peter Merlin became aware of a location outside Area 51 where a crash once occurred. Now, how did you find out about this location here? I heard about it from some ranchers who lived out there back in 1967. Something came streaking out of the sky, slammed into the desert, and exploded. Pretty soon, 
Air Force guys showed up in helicopters and trucks and kicked them off the land, told them to forget what they'd seen, and then they cleaned up whatever was left. There was one piece they didn't find. Check this out. You ever seen metal folded like that before? I have not. I mean, that's incredible. The force, it must have been planted in the ground at extreme speed. I'm not sure what kind of alloy that is. It's like stomping on a beer can. It's almost like it went straight right. in. But there's no impact crater here. I don't think it hit right here. I think it hit somewhere else and parts went all over. The piece is too large to move for testing. The team decides to split up and scour the desert for smaller debris. What we're out here looking for, it's not just what might be aircraft parts, but you can't assume what you're looking for is man-made. Uh, you have to be open to whatever the case may be. Now, if it's a piece of something that I'm concerned about, uh, I won't touch it unless uh, we get a Geiger counter on it. The Nevada desert was the site of many atomic tests. Caution is paramount. Pete, I think we found something here. You may want to come take a look at this. I guess you bring that Geiger counter with you. Will do. Let's the see twisted piece of metal is about six inches long, and small circles appear to be bolt or rivet holes. I think we're okay. Looks pretty clean. What do you think? It's very distorted. Looks like it's been subjected to a lot of force. It's clean. Well, this is definitely downwind from that uh, piece that you found. It is. It's right along the flight trajectory. Now you can see it's got some form to this side right here, but uh, jagged on this side. This definitely tore off of something obviously larger. I'm wondering about these holes, if this was from heat, or now this is more of an exact hole. These are probably bolt holes, I would imagine. They will send the specimen they've gathered to the science team to try to determine its origins. Well, this is an excellent find right here. Mystery Quest is investigating whether the U.S. government is hiding a UFO research program at Area 51 and other locations. There was only one place to get a clear view of Area 51. It is called Tikaboo Peak, an 8,000-foot summit 26 miles from the base. The team will be led by Glenn Campbell, who has led many excursions and is familiar with the hidden trail that leads to the peak. But this trek is different. Oh my god. Well, wow. That's a big lens. <laughs> this is the largest telephoto lens ever brought to Tikabu Peak. It can zoom 66 times further than a standard lens. The team makes steady progress as Campbell leads the group to the summit. Suddenly, a fighter jet appears.
this guy has circled circled this peak three times and and I, I kind of ask myself does he know we're here is he looking at us the jet makes repeated passes man he's coming down really low right 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 through the uh, the valley there wow Then, it becomes clear the government is scrutinizing the team's progress. Coming! Coming! A military helicopter suddenly swoops in for a closer look. Man, they have to be here for us. Is he circling this peak? He's circling the peak. He has to be here for us. Well, there's no question. He's here for us. The helicopter is an unmarked Black Hawk type chopper, often used by special forces. They have never bothered with us here before. My concern is we're not going to be inter no one's going to interfere with us up there on the peak. We get down below, we may find the sheriff waiting for us, the local Local law enforcement. There's the helicopter again. And he's go he's directly over Pickaboo Peak. And he's here to watch us. <laughs> There's no other reason for him to be here. The helicopter circles for 20 minutes, then disappears as suddenly as it arrived. I honestly don't have a good feeling about this. The science team has received the wreckage from the desert. Dr. Jerry Delaney at Rutgers University Lab will oversee the testing using an electron microprobe, a device that can determine almost 100% of the elements that make up any object. Dr. Delaney will test for anything extraterrestrial. There are very distinctive features that are the signature of the trip through the Earth's atmosphere. Anything that comes through the atmosphere, whether it's a stone the size of my thumb or uh, a spaceship is going to heat up and it can form a, a crust in some circumstances. The microprobe generates an electron beam. And that in turn generates x-rays. They will tell me what the composition of the sample is. The information is sent to a computer, which identifies the chemical makeup of the sample. What do we got? Ooh, oh my goodness. Well, this isn't what I thought it was gonna be. Having said that, it is a very typical terrestrial alloy. It's brass. This object looks as if it was something that was man-made, maybe a vehicle, maybe a, a farm equipment, maybe something military, I don't know. But everything about it says man-made terrestrial. The expedition team continues to investigate. Camera surveillance could provide proof of a conspiracy as new evidence is discovered at the top of Tikabu Peak. This looks like new construction. I mean, other times I've, I haven't seen this thing here before. Mystery Quest is deep within the Nevada desert, trying to unlock the puzzle of extraterrestrial life at Area 51. This commercial aviator believes that the government is reverse engineering alien technology at Area 51. This Air Force pilot says he encountered an alien craft at 30,000 feet. And these researchers are trying to gain more information using an incredibly powerful high definition lens to peer into the base. 
The team has climbed 8,000 feet to capture the closest images ever taken of Area 51. Surveillance helicopters and jets have buzzed the expedition and seem to confirm there is something the government does not want revealed. All right. There it is. That's what you wanted to see. There's Area 51. The team looks at recent satellite images providing a bird's eye view of the base. They'll compare these images to what they see through the high definition lens. New construction would prove that Area 51 is an expanding facility. Well, we know what most of these hangars are for. We've determined over the years, okay, this is for the A-12. So the more we know about the base, the smaller the unknowns become. Right. What do you see? The team examines the base through the powerful lens. Multiple buildings and runways are clearly visible on the monitor. But no cars or people are observed. Then, Glenn Campbell notices something. This looks like new construction. I mean, other times I've, I haven't seen this thing here before. Wow, what, what do you suppose it's for? Well, it's big. And what do they need a hangar that big for? Campbell spots a large hangar, which appears much smaller in the satellite photo. And something new implies a new program of some sort, doesn't it? While it is not confirmation that alien research is underway, the new construction is evidence that Area 51 is still operational. Do you have any insight with, with your background as to what potentially the, the future of what they're hiding here is? Well, on the aeronautical side of the house, I certainly expect there will be uh, development of high-tech demonstration aircraft, uh, new stealth technologies, and unmanned vehicles. But beyond that, who knows? Anything could be in those hangars. The team descends to retrieve the over 48 hours of aerial surveillance taken by the desert cameras. The footage reveals two possible sightings. In one scene, an object seems to appear, then quickly vanish in the sky above the ridgeline. In the second, a procession of lights drift near the horizon. But careful examination has revealed these anomalies are not evidence of UFOs. The first was determined to be a sudden cloud formation. In the second video, a series of lights appear on the horizon. However, after examining the evidence, the team concludes these lights are most likely headlights from passing automobiles. The expedition has uncovered some important new information. The team is determined that the U.S. military is still conducting research and testing at Area 51. They also proved that the government will go to great lengths to protect the secret research they are doing. And new evidence has been uncovered of government pressure on a U.S. Air Force pilot to lie about his UFO encounter. The truth will eventually come out as it always does. The question is, when and how? The UFO phenomenon, as far as I'm concerned, and a lot of people, is the largest mystery in history. People need to investigate it and investigate it scientifically.